Okay, this lecture continues. SHO Dynamics is specific to Honors Physics AB and AP Physics C. Throughout our descriptions of oscillations, even going as far back as our unit on work and energy, I have been using this vertical oscillator as a means of demonstrating an oscillation. Now with a vertical oscillator, in addition to the spring force, you of course also have the force of gravity. So what we want to do here in this lecture is set up F equals MA for such a situation, arrive at a differential equation, and then see how the solution to the differential equation works. Okay, before I get to the details, however, we're always going to assume that the oscillation occurs below the equilibrium position. So for example, right here is the equilibrium position, and then I set the object into oscillation like so. Notice that it's oscillating below the equilibrium position. If the oscillator rises above the equilibrium position, then it's a different physical situation. For example, say something like so, we're going to ignore that detail completely. So the oscillation occurs below the equilibrium position. Okay, let me go ahead and reposition my phone. Like so. Let me also tilt it upwards. Like so. Okay, so as you can see, let's take a look at the vertical simple harmonic oscillator. I have it phrased for us as a problem. Go ahead and write the problem down into your notes as I read it to you here. Show that a vertical SHO has a solution that is the following expression. This is the solution to the differential equation that we'll write down in just a few moments. Show that a vertical oscillator has this as the solution to its differential equation. This is the position as a function of time, where once again, omega, the angular frequency, is the square root of k over n. Okay, here's how we begin to set up this scenario. Okay, here's our vertical spring like so. Okay, right here is the equilibrium position. And then once again, as I demonstrated, the oscillation occurs below. Position. So then below the equilibrium position, the situation looks like this. Okay, so here's our mass m attached to the spring. The spring has a constant k. Okay, right here is the equilibrium position, and then we have our displacement x like so. Okay, the displacement x is still thought of by definition as a positive number. Therefore, the force of gravity pointing downwards is also thought of as positive, and the spring force pointing back towards equilibrium, as it always is, is thought of as negative. Here's our force diagram. So we have the spring force upwards, Kx. We'll make it negative in the expression in just a moment. And then we have mg downwards. And then we add up the forces and just set it equal to ma. So we have then mg minus Kx is equal to ma as our starting point. Once again, downwards by definition is the positive direction here because the displacement is thought of as positive. Okay, now let me go ahead and divide the mass m to each term here on the other side of the expression. And I'm also going to write the acceleration here as the second derivative of position with respect to time. So when you do, you end up with this as the differential equation. Like so. Okay, and now what we have to do is show that this expression here is, in fact, the solution to this differential equation. The way that we do that is we plug in x into this expression here, and we take the second derivative and we plug it into this expression here. So let's now go ahead and take the position equation and start taking derivatives. So the first derivative of the position with respect to time, that's the velocity, you'll notice is the same thing as it is for the horizontal case. The reason for that is because these quantities right here, that is mg over k, these are all constants. So then therefore when I differentiate, that's equal to zero, and then therefore I'm just taking the derivative of this with respect to time. That's the same thing as our velocity equation for the horizontal case from earlier in this unit. That is like so. Okay, then differentiate again, like so, to get the acceleration. So, so, so far for the vertical SHO, the only thing that's different in terms of the kinematics from what we've already seen is the addition of that mj over k term, mg over k, excuse me, when talking about the position as a function of time. Okay, now let's go ahead and fit everything into the differential equation. So g minus k over m times x, that's this quantity here. 
And this then equals on the right hand side of the expression, the second derivative, which is this expression here. I have just enough room to fit it here on the board. And now let's go ahead and start simplifying. So first I have G and then watch this. K's cancel and M's cancel, so minus G and then minus K over M times this. Equals then the right hand side of the expression. That is like so. Okay, the G's cancel out like so. And then with what is left, notice that everything cancels except for the omega squared and the k over m. So the a cancels like so, the cosine omega t cancels like so, the negative sign cancels like so. And then the only thing that's left is right here is that omega squared is equal to right here k over m. So then therefore, once again, the angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m. So we've solved the differential equation. Essentially, the only difference between the horizontal SHO and the vertical SHO is in the position equation, this additional term, this mg over k. So then therefore, what does the graph associated with this position equation look like? And then let's just relate it to what we already know the graph from earlier when talking about the horizontal case. So let me do some erasing. And now let's actually just graph out this solution. So when I graph the solution here, I'm just gonna graph out once again a cosine curve, but in this case, the oscillation doesn't occur about the equilibrium position, which is here. Instead, it occurs about this point, mg over k, which is below the equilibrium position in the positive direction. So let's represent this mg over k as this dotted line like so. And then therefore, a single cosine curve is drawn about that point that is like this. So the only thing that's different between the vertical SHO and, and the horizontal SHO is this additional term of mg over k. Here's where that mg over k term is when talking about a simple demonstration. So let me reposition my phone once again and demonstrate this. That is like so. Let me go ahead and move the phone downwards. Bear with me as I do. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then here's my vertical oscillator once again. Okay, so first of all, we have right here the equilibrium position like so, and then I go below the equilibrium position. This distance right here below equilibrium is the quantity mg over k. The reason for that is because right now while the object is at rest, you have the spring force of kx upwards canceling out with mg downwards, solve for x. When you do, you get mg over k. So this point right here is a distance of mg over k below the equilibrium position. And then it's about this point, this mg over k distance, that the oscillation occurs. That's the only difference between a vertical SHO and a horizontal SHO. So this is why I've been using a vertical SHO the entire year thus far to demonstrate oscillations.